Everyone here. Uh, I don't know how much you, but I'm done. I'm done with all this stuff. So my talk title is, Does It Matter? Does it matter? Isn't that the question that we always ask ourselves? I know th th some things matter to me and other things don't. So I'm done with it. Matter. The thing that's beautiful about that word, it's a noun and it's a verb. So let's go to class. Matter as a verb. The trick we play on ourselves when things don't go our way, things like, I don't care, or it's unimportant, or better yet, I need to plan my day. I have responsibilities. My time will come. These are games that we play in our minds. I know I do. Can any of you relate to that? You know, I've got things that are more important. Oh, I want to have a good time, or I'd like to experience this. But, oh, i got to go to work, and gee, I have to work overtime because I've got to get that report in because my boss needs this, or, you know, or, you know, the kids need new shoes, or got to pay for this, that, or the other. There's always something, it seems like, that's in the way of what it is that we want to experience in our lives. Are we saying that we're unimportant? Somehow we came to believe that we're undeserving. I know that our philosophy talks about how we think about ourselves creates our reality, and we always talk about, it seems like every week, where do those beliefs come from? Do they come from our parents? Do they come from our teachers? Do they come from our other friends? People can say things about us, but they only become true when we hold on to them and we bring them inside of ourselves. And so that's part of what we do here, the four of us. Well, actually more than four of us, but you know, Dr. Lord, Dr. Dale, the boss Elizabeth, and myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But we're here to inspire, to show you that you're so much more than what you are led to believe that you are, that you do have that capability to change your life and to become what it is that you want to experience. The hard part is, somehow we came to believe that we're undeserving. And it's time to unwrap that present. Regardless of my expectations, I still need to put one foot in front of the other. Again, part of this philosophy, we can think about what we want to experience, but if I sit down, nothing's going to happen. I've got to get up. Not somebody else. Me. You. You're the one that has to get up and move your feet to create that reality. Yes, the opportunities are there, but without my interaction with the Spirit, with this universe, nothing can be created. And so it's that mindset that we're here to. We can no longer be a victim, we have to be that creator. Because we are nothing less than the Spirit, that divine creation that we all talk about, regardless of your faith or your background, we're all talking about and, and giving honor and paying homage to that divine ideal that there's something greater than what we are here that we work in partnership with. We are not the victim. We are the co-creator, like Dr. Dale just said. How you think about an event can change the energy around it. There's a lot of stuff going on. And we talk about 
our individual input and how we see things. And this sanctuary, this sacred space, we talk about loving thy fellow neighbor. Those two songs that we have sung are talking about that very ideal. The universe is a very big place. Spirit, planet, universes, and even beyond that. But there's also the infinitesimal. No matter how far we can go small, we can always go half as small as that. So there's this dynamic range that is incomprehensible, but it's still one power, one ideal, one life. I know that the faith within me now neutralizes all doubt. This is a scientific use of a mental statement. There must be no compromise with the consciousness. Talking about divine right order, I'm getting a little bit of a ring down there, so I'm going to stay up on stage. The universe is one thing happening at all time, in all places. So this just happens to pop up on my computer as I'm doing my talk. I don't even know what my talk is going to be about. But this pops up right at the time that I was creating it. That divine ideal. Again, the universe is showing clues that it's there. It's listening and wanting and waiting to create based upon our thoughts. Our thoughts, not somebody else's thoughts, not some other place. It begins right here within each and every one of us. The drain, the universe. Energy is organized. Take a look at those two photos. Do you see something in common between those two? The universe is intelligent. I'm doing dishes and watching the water go down the drain, but yet I'm seeing the universe. It's the same pattern. So if you think that life is chaotic, that it's unorganized, that it doesn't make sense, try doing the dishes and you will see the universe in life the micro and the macro that dynamic range that is spirit it's how we think about life how i think about my own life how you think about your life the universe always says yes With that statement, is there a victim? No, there's an experience. Matter, a noun. That is the physical reality of what we are here. This chair, this stage, this light. You as this vehicle, it's matter. But does it matter? That's the question. Does it matter? That's the same sentence. The only difference is the first does it matter? The it was lowercase. Does it matter? Capital I, meaning spirit, God, the universe, infinite power. Does it matter? That's a great question. The answer is yes, emphatically. Because all matter is nothing less than the body of that divine ideal, that divine energy. 
So now we're talking about spirit as a noun as opposed to spirit as an action. Ooh, fans in the way, I got to come down a little bit. Life is created from a mental outpicturing. It is impossible to create form without the mental equivalent, so the statement, does it matter, is true. The thought must come first before form can materialize. The thought becomes the thing. Here's where the rubber meets the road. And this is why I'm done. How can your life, how can my life be positive, be uplifting, expansive when I can't even get along with my neighbor? We pray all the time, sending my love over the mountain, talking about over in Europe and the other side of the world and all of that stuff, and I don't understand why they can't get along. What are you talking about, people? I'm so done with this. You can't even get along with our neighbors. Oh, well, he didn't, he, he put something in his yard, and it's not approved by HOA, so I'm going to go tell the HOA and get them in trouble because I don't like what they did. Oh, God. I knew I shouldn't have bought that HOA. <laughs> But the beautiful thing is that as we're here in this room, fine. I've made the mistake of judging or looking at somebody else different because they don't have the same ideals that I have. But I'm smart enough that when I come to this place, reality capital R, spirit, God, that divine essence, I am filled with that ideal. I am filled with that type of love so I can drop the relative and know that my neighbor, whether it's next door or whether it's on the other side of the planet, is a human being worthy of my love. And the only way to get peace is it has to start with me. So this day, with all the music that we have, including the karaoke, take a look at the mirror. And what are you putting out? You are not the victim. Thoughts become things. The seed put into the soil becomes the plant. It's not the other way around. Well, you know what I mean. Because the plant does create fruit, which becomes the seed. Which, and so it's repetitive. Life always goes on. There we go. I just love that. Ah. <sighs> The proper state of our mind is the utmost important. Here we go. Remember that the innermost beliefs back behind feelings are very creative. Are you giving the law, which is the portion of spirit that creates the thing? The thought becomes the thing. Pure energy, or is it the energy tainted with relative ideas? Are your beliefs coming from spirit, or are they coming from the news? Ask yourself that question. Where is your reality, capital R, coming from? Maybe it's time to get out into nature to see the patterns, just like the drain in the universe, the patterns of the leaves. Go hiking. And look at the beauty, but see it from the standpoint of recognizing that everything is God in action. See the hidden patterns in front of your face. Every single one of us are different. Every single face is different, but yet 
We have hands. We have arms. We have the bones that articulate that are in the exact same place in each of our bodies. We are the same more than we are different. Because I tell you what, our minds are spirit. This right here, the flesh, is just, a, well, in my case, it's a 1966 version of a human. <laughs> and I'm getting ready to have. <sighs> I love life. Getting ready to be a granddad. And the funny thing about it is, this talk, I know how I raise my kids. And I see how they're talking about raising my grandkid. It's not how I would do it. But that's okay. Because I know that I raised my kids with love and, and passion and allowed them to explore. And I know that regardless of how they act on the outside, that seed is inside them. And that seed is being planted into that next generation. Trust the idea of love and compassion. We learn... Wait. Trusting the ideas of love and compassion we learn here... We learn here elevates humanity? Oh. Damn it. I need that comma. I need that comma for my brain. Again, here's my brain... I read it too fast. I don't comprehend it, so I need to slow myself down. Just, ah, let's just breathe. Oh. Ah. But yes, learning compassion and love and knowing that that is who the truth of our being is creates and elevates humanity. It allows that whatever is happening outside is relative. It is through our understanding of this principle that we are God in action and that it is how I view the world. I change the relative because I'm living from the absolute truth that spirit is the only thing happening. It's the only truth in my life. Knowing that the universe is always acting upon itself, so life must be unfolding perfectly. Damn, I love it when I do it right. It may just seem illogical from our vantage point. I mean, look at this chaos that we've been talking about and, and, and Dr. Laura talked about. It means nothing. We are everyday people. It's a bright, sunshiny day. Right now, some of you might be listening to those, th those songs and going, what the heck are they talking about? Because I feel down here. Well, you're the director of your life. See the patterns of spirit in action, regardless of the relative. We have to break eggs to make an omelet, people. So a few eggs are being broken right now. Does it matter? It all matters because it matters. Spirit, that infinite possibilities. Others talk about quantum physics and quantum theories where the unformed becomes form. That's what we teach here. Our thoughts, the mental equivalent of what we think about our life, spirit is there going Okay, I can do that. Remember, we are the only directors of our own movie. Spirit is only the stagehand and only creates the set. We're not victims. You're the director. How do you like your life? 
you don't like it, well, you're not the victim. You're the director. Change your movie. Is it a comedy? Is it a sad movie? Or is it a horror movie? If you don't like it, change it. But if you like it, keep thinking what you're thinking. But just know that we are, not long, we are no longer victims. The reason is because now I've just enlightened you that this center, this philosophy has opened you to the secret of the universe. Your thoughts matter. Does it matter? Yes, because it in its infinite possibilities, creates form, which is matter. So pass the popcorn, buckle the buttercup, and enjoy the ride. Thank you.